Hello again team, it's Jess or Jashikaran and welcome back for another video. Today we are setting up for 2022 in my yearly collections journal, which is a new addition to my planner lineup for the year coming. I'm excited to be doing my planning a little bit differently this time around, but more on that later. For this yearly collections journal, I'm using the A5 Galaxy or Drip notebook from Archer and Olive. And as always, any of the equipment I use in setting up the pages we have today can be found in the description box below. But without further ado, let's get into it. For the start of journal pages that I had in my second half of 2021 journal, I went with a pegboard inspired theme. I super loved how this theme turned out, and I wasn't quite ready to let it go just yet. So for the pages we're setting up today, I've gone with a similar theme with slightly different decorations. First though, I went in to do my nameplate page, which actually isn't very typical for me. Most of the time when I set up a new journal, I get a little bit nervous about mucking things up, and starting on the very first page like this just kind of makes me a little bit tense. Which is why you'll see that I've penciled in my name and some little sparkle decorations ahead of time. Although penciling things in first isn't a foolproof way to avoid mistakes, which we'll see in a few pages time, it does still make me feel a little bit less nervous when it comes to penning things in. The nameplate page took two minutes though, and then it was over and on to the first page for 2022. As I said before, the way I'm doing my planning in my journals come next year is a little bit different to how I've done it previously. I talked about it a bit in my planner lineup video from a few weeks ago, but rather than having the pages we set up in this video in the same journal as my regular monthly setups, this planner is instead going to be a yearly collections journal that I use year after year until it runs out. So it'll hold things like my annual trackers, yearly goal setting pages, effectively any pages that I want to use for a full year. By having them in this separate journal, it means that I won't have to transfer over or redraw any pages at the mid-year point. The journals that I use on a daily basis, or what I call my everyday journals, the ones with the monthly setups, like the monthly logs, habit trackers, etc. Those ones tend to only last me six months, meaning that if I set up any annual trackers in those journals, they either only get half filled in, or I have to make sure that I only set them up for the six month life of that journal. Having a separate yearly collections journal is my solution to this. At this stage, I'm not too sure what I'm gonna do in the journal to clearly mark the end of one year and the start of another, I'm thinking at this stage that I might use a washi tape border or something similar, but that is something for next year Jess to worry about. In terms of the page we're setting up here though, this is effectively a cover page or a welcome page for the new year. As you can see, we've again gone with that pegboard theme, but rather than drawing in plant doodles onto the pegboard, I've instead opted to use these floral vellum die cuts. Florals aren't a theme that I use all that often in my journal, in part because I find them somewhat intimidating, but when I saw these die cuts I thought that they would be perfect for my setup. I appreciate that given that they're thin vellum, they won't add a lot of bulk to the journal, and they make the decorative aspect of this setup a lot faster than it otherwise would have been. On the cover page though we have the Hello 2022 title, a box to write in my word of the year once I pick it in the top right hand corner, a box to write out my two goals for the year ahead in the bottom left corner, and then two little Polaroid doodles to mark the first and last day of next year. I'm not too sure at this stage what I actually want to put in the picture space on the Polaroid, but I was thinking that I could possibly print out a photo that represents each of those days, or maybe a little doodle of some description, but I've got a little bit of time before the new year to make my choice. In terms of timing though, from first touch of the pen to final erasings, the cover page took about 28 minutes, and then it was time to flip over and move on to the page dedicated to my word of the year for 2022. To start this page, I first went in and drew the pegboard grid header. While on the cover page, I opted to stick in the vellum decorations before drawing in the grid, I found that to be a really time consuming process because I then had to go and draw the grid over the clear parts of the vellum. So I decided that the longer time taken actually bothered me more than being able to see the grid through the vellum paper. On this header though, I'm just using two separate craft paper boxes, one to say word of the year and one to put the actual word in. 
I don't have my word of the year finalized yet. I'm still playing around with a few options, but I'd be curious to know, do you have a word of the year? And if so, what are you planning on having for 2022? Or what was your word for 2021? My word for 2021 was freedom, mainly in the sense of giving myself the freedom to be my authentic self. The header here took roughly eight and a half minutes, though I did have to come back a few times after working on this page to add in a couple of extra details. On the other side of the spread is where I'm going to be writing out my goals for 2022. This is another page that has a full grid background compared to just having a grid header like we have on the word of the year page. Along with the decoration, on this page I put in three craft paper boxes using the paper from my Archer and Olive Neapolitan notepad. So one box for the goals title, and then a larger box for each of the two goals for the year ahead. I haven't quite decided on the wording of these goals, but I have one that's job or career related, and one that's personal health related. While setting up this one, I also felt that both pages of the spread needed a little bit of an extra touch. So I added in some blue-grey wood pattern washi tape that has some gold lines in it. I figured that this fit fairly well with the colour palette we have from the floral decorations. I also went over both of the page titles in black just to make them stand out a bit more. And after roughly 13 minutes, the goals page was finished and we can move on to what are going to be my goal action plans. I've dedicated one page each to make an action plan for my two goals. In terms of this setup, all I'm putting in are the page titles, and I went with having one on the top and one on the bottom, just because I kind of like the way it balances the decoration on the spread a little better. The structure of these action plans will likely differ a little bit between each of them, but sections that I know I want to include are a space to write down why the goal is important to me, a space to write down what an ideal outcome looks like, and spaces to write down the daily, weekly, and monthly or one-off actions that I have to do in order to achieve those goals. You might also be able to see that for the decoration on this spread, I've actually only used two of the die cuts and have carefully cut them in specific ways so that I could have florals sticking out of either end of the craft paper boxes. The nice part about having parts of the die cuts behind the craft paper is that I could be a little less careful with the edges that would be hidden, and you can kind of just use the box to hide any irregular edges. In terms of timing from first touch of the pen to final erasings, this spread took roughly 11 minutes, but as always this doesn't include the idea generation time or sketching in time. Flipping over, and you can see this spread actually already has washi tape on it and a Dutch door cut into it. I did this part before filming the rest of the setup, but essentially all it involved was running washi tape horizontally along the first spread, then taking the washi tape over the edge of the right hand page and onto the next spread. To cut the Dutch door I used a combination of scissors and a craft knife. So the scissors I used for cutting the page horizontally along the top edge of that washi tape, and then I used the craft knife to remove the top section of the paper. If you're going to do something like this in your journal, please do take your time and be careful. Craft knives are sharp. Also, if you wanted more details on how to make Dutch doors in your journal or other examples on how to use them, make sure to check out my Dutch door playlist. That one and any other video or playlist related to this setup can be found in the description box below. This layout though is going to be for my 101 things in 2022 list. This is another concept that I have a video on, but the general gist is that it's 101 little things that I want to do in the year coming. So things like trying a certain recipe, or going to a certain event, or maybe celebrating something in particular, that kind of thing. I found that having it just on one spread in 2021 made it a little bit tight for space, so for 2022 I've decided to put it on this Dutch door layout. In theory, this will also give me space to record when in the year that thing was accomplished. To make each item on the 101 things list a little easier to differentiate, I decided to put in a grey highlight on every second line. Obviously, my counting skills aren't quite up to scratch, as there was a point that I accidentally skipped two lines instead of just one, but this wasn't anything that a bit of spare white paper couldn't cover up. It's always good to have some different ways to fix mistakes in your journal, just if you ever need them. 
including the Dutch door making, this layout took about 29 minutes to set up, and I am super looking forward to populating this list in preparation for next year. Another style of spread that I really liked from 2021, and am excited to use again next year, is the 2222s in 2022 spread. Of course, this year it was only 21 things, but the idea behind this spread is that you have 22 things that you want to do 22 times in 2022. The things that I've selected to track on here are 22 movies watched, 22 documentaries watched, TV shows watched, games played, books read, cricket projects, new foods tried, meat-free dinners, no food out days, two liters of water days, 10,000 step days, Kilos lost, restaurants tried, date nights or date days, social outings, work free days, blog posts, non the week that was vlogs, $100 saved, long term collections or just for fun bullet journal spreads, hair masks and face masks. One of the problems I found with how I approached this layout in 2021 was that a lot of the time I'd forget whether I'd recorded an instance of having done one of the 21 things. To combat that issue, for 2022, I'm also including a space to record the 22 instances for the majority of the 22 things. So, for instance, for watching 22 movies, I have a space to record each of the movie titles. For 22 hair masks, I have a space to record each of the dates that I do those. Some of the 22 things I felt I didn't really need to record like this though, either because they're being tracked elsewhere, like the 22 instances of saving $100, or they might be easy to recount, like the 22 long-term collection or just for fun bullet journal layouts. Including the time taken to lay the washi tape on this layout and also cut out the little tabs along the side, this one took about 41 minutes so making it one of the more time-consuming parts of this setup. Flipping over, and the next layout we're setting up is a weight tracker. I would be inclined to call this a weight loss tracker, except historical data tells me that that might not necessarily be the best name for it. <laughs> this layout has two main parts though, so at the bottom, in the larger section, we have a space to graph my weight change across the year, with a column for the Sunday of each week. Along the bottom, I've written the day numbers and the months that they fall into, and once the new year starts along the side, I'll define my scale for this graph. I would do it now, but I kind of want to hold out to new year just to make sure that I start the scale in the right place. The other part of this spread is on the top right hand side, and this is where I'll be tracking my weight change on a monthly basis. So considering my weight at the start and end of each month and the difference between those values whether they be negative numbers or positive numbers. I'm using this layout as a way to track one of my metrics for my health related goal. And although it's the only layout that I have in this setup, which is a physical health related spread, I do have a separate video with a bunch of different ideas, which would be worth checking out if physical health was one of your goals for next year. In terms of timing though, from first touch of the pen to final erasings, this one came in at about 25 minutes. And then it was over the page and onto what I'm calling my no fast food challenge. I'll be the first to admit that I eat way too much fast food. I kind of use food as a comfort thing, which in itself is another issue that I need to work on. But I find that any time that I've had a hard day at work or I'm feeling stressed or down, my immediate thought is, I think I'll get takeout for dinner. This is something that I want to work on in 2022. So I've set myself the task of tracking what days I do or don't have fast food, with the general intention to be not having it. On this one, I'll be using the two main colors that I've been using throughout all of the spreads to indicate the days that I do have fast food versus the days that I don't. So probably blue for a day that I don't and pink for a day that I do. This one is set up in the same way that a year in pixels spread would be, so just with one small box for each day of the year, with the initials of each of the months of the year running along the top, and the day numbers running along the side. For the two little craft paper boxes that we have on this page, one of them is the page title, saying no fast food, 
and in the other one I'm going to write a list of the food places that I'm considering for this challenge. So the places that I'm actually counting as fast food. I figured if I predetermine those at the start of the year, I can't bend the rules when it comes to tracking these things later on. After 17 minutes though, we are on to the next layout, which is the reading challenge that my best friend Rachel and I are doing for 2022. If you hadn't already seen the setup video for the bullet journal I'm making for her, that one's also linked in the description box below. But in terms of our reading challenge, the general idea behind this is that we've picked out 12 different genres or categories of book, which are going to be randomly assigned to the months of the year for 2022. We then take it in turns to pick a book from that genre. So for instance, our first genre for January is historical fiction, and Rachel will be picking the book for that month. Come the end of January, we're going to use an online wheel spinner to pick the genre for February, and then I will pick the book that we read for that month. On this layout though, I'm giving myself 12 boxes in which I can write down the month, the genre, and the book that we end up reading. I may also include a checkbox in each of these that I can tick off once I've read the book, but as I haven't finalized the layout that I'm going to use in each of the boxes, I do just leave them blank in this setup. This page took 24 minutes from first touch of the pen to final erasings, and then it was over the page and onto the layout to record my monthly challenges for 2022. This is something that I really enjoy putting in my journal, but somehow always manage to neglect. I am sincerely hoping that that is not the case for next year, and I've already started brainstorming the challenges that I want to do for 2022, and I'm thinking that once I have a full list of 12, I may well use that online wheel spinner again to assign them to the different months. I am somewhat intending on making these challenges health related, whether that be physical health or mental health. So if you have any suggestions of monthly challenges that you think I should do, please do drop them in the comments. Also, if you've gotten this far into the video and this is the first video you've seen from me, I just wanted to say hello, thank you for being here. I really appreciate you guys taking the time to watch my videos and I hope it's giving you some good ideas for your journal. Of course, if you do like what you've seen so far, please do make sure to give the video a big thumbs up. And if you weren't already and felt so inclined, do feel free to subscribe to my channel so that you don't miss out on my future videos. My intention with these videos is not only to just kind of show you guys what I'm doing in my journal and the way that I'm using it, but also to provide insight and hopefully inspiration for your journal as well. That aside though, the monthly challenges page took about 14 minutes to set up, and then we're on to the right hand side of the spread, where I'm going to be putting my reset checklists. If you hadn't heard of these before, these are tasks that I try to do at the end of any week or end of any month to get myself prepared for the month or the week ahead. Kind of as a way to give myself a fresh slate feeling and allow me to feel a bit more organized, a little less scatterbrained for the month or week ahead. This is another concept that I do have a bunch of videos on, so make sure to check out my reset checklist playlist, which can also be found in the description box. I didn't write out the steps for my reset checklists as part of this setup, just because I want to review the reset checklists that I'm currently working with before the new year. Just to double check that they're still serving me well, and to make sure there isn't anything I want to change before I put it into my new journal. For timing though, this page took roughly 16 minutes, and then we're on to what I call my then and now page. This one is typically a snapshot of me at the start and end of my journal, but as this journal is going to be used for several years, I'm setting this page up just to be for 2022. So a space to write down my answers to a collection of prompts on January 1st and December 31st. I really like pages like this that get you to make a comparison, just so that you can see some of the things that change over a span of time. The prompts that I'm using for this one are a current goal, my current savings, my current food obsession, a movie that I recently enjoyed, my current song obsession, a TV show that I recently enjoyed, a game that I recently enjoyed, a word or phrase that I'm using a lot, something that I recently tried, something that I'm feeling accomplished about, my biggest life problem at that current moment, 
something that I want to try, and something that I'm looking forward to. Of course, these are just the ones that I thought would be interesting for me, but if you were making your own version of this, use whatever prompts that would be of interest to you. For instance, previously I've included my weight on a layout like this, but as I already have a weight tracker just a couple pages back, I didn't really feel the need to put it in again. This one took about 10 minutes from first touch of the pen to final erasings. And then we're on to the right hand side of the spread, which is actually going to hold two different elements. The first one at the top being a letter to myself. So a letter for me to write to myself at the start of 2022 to open at the start of 2023. This is something that I did for 2021. So I do currently have a letter sitting there waiting for new year Jess but this wasn't something that I put in my journal. To keep my letter safe and in a secure place, I figured having it in my journal would be a good idea. I don't have that letter written yet because I'm going to wait till the new year to write it, but I do have a little brown envelope stuck in to put that letter into. Underneath this, I have a section to write out any ideas that I have for my 2023 setup. I always like to include these in my everyday journals, so I figured it would probably be a good idea to have it in my yearly collections journal as well. Essentially what this is, is a place to write down any notes that I have for things that I might want to try or change when it comes to setting up my pages for next next year. I find that sections and pages like this are hugely helpful and I get a lot of use out of them. So although it won't probably have a lot of immediate use come next year, I do think it's certainly going to be useful come the end of next year. I'm really excited to try out this yearly collections journal. It is a bit different for me, as I said, usually I'd set up these kind of pages in one of my everyday journals with my monthly logs and monthly habit trackers and stuff like that. But I do think that having them separate like this is really going to help me in the long run in terms of not having to set the pages up again and also as a way to better track the happenings across the year. Question of the day for you though, are you making any changes to the way that you do your planning in the year ahead? I'd be very curious to know if there are any changes, big or small, that you're making to your regular planning system. And if you feel like sharing, do drop them in the comment section below. For our final flip through though, we have my nameplate page with the little sparkles, the yearly cover page with a space to write down my word of the year, my two goals for next year, and then places to put some little pictures at the start and end of the year. We have a space to write out my word of the year and then do some journaling about why I've selected that word, and also a space to summarize my goals, so the health related goal and the job or career related goal. We then have the space to write down my goal action plans, so the steps that I'm going to need to do in order to actually achieve those goals. My 101 things in 2022 list, which I am so looking forward to populating. A space to record my 2022s in 2022, and also places to record what each of those 22 instances for each of the different things are my weight tracker with monthly summaries and the weekly graft section, my no fast food challenge in a year in pixel style, and a space to record the books that we're reading for the reading challenge, a page to record my monthly challenges, and a space to record my monthly and weekly reset checklists, my then and now page for 2022, and the place to hold my letter to myself to open in 2023, and my 2023 ideas space. It took a hot minute to set up all of these pages, but I am so damn chuffed with how they turned out. And I'm very thankful that I decided to use those vellum die cuts rather than try and draw in all the decorations myself. A nice little shortcut to use for spreads that are still nice to look at, but didn't take as long as they otherwise would have to set up. Hopefully you guys enjoyed today's video and got some ideas for your own journal. If you did, please do make sure to give this video a big thumbs up. And if you hadn't already and felt so inclined, do feel free to subscribe to my channel for more on planning, productivity, and personal development. As always team, thank you for watching and until next time, bye.